Okay, here we go, everybody. This is section 9.2, part 2. So if you remember, in the last episode, we graphed a cardioid. And how did we get a cardioid? It was when we had y equals a plus b cosine theta, but a is equal to b. That gives you a cardioid. Today, we're going to graph again an equation in the form of y equals a plus b cosine theta, but in this case, we're going to take the second case where a is greater than b. And here we have one such equation right here, 4 plus 2 cosine theta. I'm going to have all of these um, in the form of cosines because, you know, I have graphics for them and we'll just remain consistent. Okay, so again, we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And you know what? Um, let's see, why don't we do the points first, right? So when x is equal to 0, or when theta is equal to 0, I have, this should be r, by the way. These should all be r's, sorry. Um, so I'm going to have r equals 4 plus 2 cosine 0, okay? And we know that cosine of 0 is 1, so that leaves me with 4 plus 2. That's equal to 6, Okay, we also know that cosine is maximum at theta equals zero, so this is the maximum value. Okay, all right, and then at five, um, pi over six, I get a value of 5.7, and that's less, right? So that makes sense. From the maximum, it's got to decrease. When theta equals pi over three, I get five. When theta equals pi over two, right, cosine of pi over two is zero, so I just get four. Then 2 pi over 3, I get 3, 2.3. And then at pi, I get 2, then 2.3, then 3, then 4, then 5, 5.7, and 6. Okay, so what do you notice? From 6, the value began to decrease until we got to 2, and then it began to increase until we got back to 6. Perfect. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and graph this one. And I'm only going to do, you know, the half pies or every half a pie. So when theta is equal to zero, we're at six. Half a pi, we are at four. Pi, we are at two. Then back to four. Then back to six. All right. And then when I graph this, what does it look like? Right? When I graph it, that's what it looks like. Okay, so what do we notice? The graph is farthest from the x-axis at theta is equal to zero. Okay, so let's let's write down some um, notes here. When theta equals zero, okay, the graph is farthest. That means in our polar graph here, the radius is going to be the maximum of 6. Then what happens? As I approach pi, the graph gets closer to the x-axis, so r is decreasing, but how small does it get? Does it get to 0? No, it doesn't. It never reaches 0. The smallest it gets is a radius of 2, is a distance of 2 from the x-axis, right? You see here, when, you know, when we minimize, when it was at its minimum, it was on the x-axis. But here, even when it's at the minimum, it never gets close to the x-axis. It always stays a little bit of, you know, a little bit away, right? Talk about social distancing. There you go, okay? So, as theta approaches pi, okay, the radius approaches a minimum of 2, okay? Radius doesn't get to 0. Doesn't reach 0. Oh my goodness, plot twist, okay? Okay, and then after um, theta is equal to pi, radius, oops, Radius increases to 6 again, 
Okay. All right. So we're going to graph this and we're going to see exactly this on our little polar graph. And oh my gosh, this is going to be just the cutest little graph ever. Okay. So as theta is equal to zero, uh, when theta is equal to zero, radius is six. So again, we're going to do two, four, six here. Okay. And then <clears throat> off of the chart at the top, pi over six, it's 5.7. Pi over 3, it's 5. Pi over 2, it's 4. 2 pi over 3, it's 3. 5 pi over 6, it's 2.3. Pi, it's 2. Okay, so let's just see what we've graphed so far. That's what we've graphed so far. And then 7 pi over 6, all right, now it's going to go back out again. Never got to 0. 7 pi over 6, 2.3. 4 pi over 3, 3. 3 pi over 2, 4. 5 pi over 3, 5. Then 5.7, and then back to 6. So from here, it goes back out and right there. And that is what we have here. Okay, so what does that look like? It looks like it was almost gonna be a circle and then somebody came in and put a little dent into it. Well, guess what the technical word for that dent is? It's actually a dimple. We call it a dimple in the world of polar coordinates. Isn't that cute? It's just a little dimple, just a little dent in the circle over there, not quite a heart. Okay, it was like, it was a circle, something, it was gonna be a heart, it changed its mind, now it's a dimple. Okay, so let's see what that looks like here. So here is the situation that we just graphed. A plus B cosine theta, where A is greater than B. And so we have, you know, 4 plus 2 cosine theta. I'm staying consistent here. Um, so what we have here, let's see. All right, so look at this. The, you know, the far, the closest it gets is 2. It never quite touches the x-axis. All right, let's just start this. 1, 2, 3, go. Look at this. It's getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Radius is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. And right there, you see, that's the minimum of the radius. So it looks a lot better here because it's got a lot more points than we do, right? And then when it's going to get bigger again, and you see that, all right? So it's got a little dent inside, okay? So that's the case where A is greater than B. Fabulous. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on to the next case, right? The next case is going to be if A is less than B. So now I have 2 plus 4 cosine theta, all right? Um, A is less than B in this one. So let's see how that is going to look. Okay, so when theta is 0, I have 6, then 5.5. So again, I have that same maximum of 6, and then it's going to go down to 4, to 2, to 0. Okay, this one made it to 0, but then at 5 pi over 6, oh, it goes below 0 to negative 1.5, to negative 2. Now, that's the first time it's going below 0 since we started doing these limousins, okay? And then it's negative 1.5. Okay, now it's increasing again, back to 0, 2, 4, 5.5 and 6. Okay, so where is the maximum here? This one is the maximum. And then where is the minimum? This one is the minimum. Okay, let's graph this guy, see how it looks. When theta equals 0, we're at a 6. At pi over 2, we're at 2. Pi, we're at negative 2. Uh, 3 pi over 2. <clears throat> we're at 2 again, and then back to 6. So when I graph this, oops, that's 6. So when I graph this, let's see how it's going to look. And that's how it looks. All right, trends. Let's look at the trends, okay? When theta equals 0, you have a maximum radius of 6, okay? Um as theta approaches pi 
radius approaches minimum of negative 2. Okay. Now, where is the radius 0? Right? That's important to note here. The radius is 0 at 2 pi over 3 and at 4 pi over 3. Okay? So, r is 0 at theta is 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Okay? And then, okay, what's also important is that in this region, right, so it was 0 at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, and then in that region, radius is negative, right? So the radius is less than 0, it's negative at 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. Okay, what do we care? What difference does that make? Oh, you shall see. Okay, so here we go. At theta equals zero, we're at a six. So two, four, six. At <clears throat> pi over six, 5.5. .5. Then four, oh, four is here. Then we are at 2, at pi over 2. 2 pi over 3, it's at 0. So just follow that line 2 pi over 3 down to 0. Okay? Now, 5 pi over 6, it's negative 1.5. So on the opposite side, negative 1.5 right there. At pi, we're at negative 2. So pi, negative 2 right here. You know what? Let me just trace what I've made so far. Tracing, tracing, tracing right there. Okay? Look at that. Look at what I've made. So where am I right now? <clears throat> right now I'm here. Right? I just went to the minimum. And now we're going to go back out. We're going to come back out. So let me do that with another color. At 7 pi over 6, my graph is negative 1.5. Here's 7 pi over 6. Negative 1.5 is right there. At 4 pi over 3, we are at 0, right there. And then at 3 pi over 2, 2. At 5 pi over 3, 4. At 11 pi over 6, 5.5. And then to 6. So look from here, we go back out, 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 right there. Okay, isn't that super, super cool? I think it's just absolutely fantastic, right? Um, and so that's what that looks like. Now, that is a limousine, okay? Um, <clears throat> I'll talk about that right now. So this is a limousine with an inner loop. Okay, all right. So let's let's look at this for a minute. Um, where does it go negative, right? We said r is negative from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, right? Well, look, that's, you know, that little tiny region in the bottom. That's that tiny little circle in the bottom, okay? It's like the little baby of the kangaroo, all right? All right, so let's do a summary of limousines. Oh, before I do that, you know what? Let me show you this. Okay, so this is what we saw before. And take a look at this one. A is less than B, so now we're going to graph 2 plus 4 cosine x. And you see how it goes, you know, it dips below the x-axis. So look, here we go. Graph is it, right there. Radius is 0. Now it's going to go in the negatives. Now radius is negative, negative, negative. And radius is back to 0. Right? So when the radius was negative, it traced that inner loop. And now all the positive radii trace that outer loop. Okay? So these are limousines. All right. So let's do a little summary of limousines. So here we have, um, you know, <clears throat> a limousine with it. So, you know, you can, you can see here, you know, all of the ones that we graphed. Um, here is the one with the dimple, okay? And then you have another dimpled limousine here, right? You've got a cardioid here, okay? And so on. 
Okay. Um, let's move on. Let's move on to roses. We're going to go very light on these. Um, so you're going to basically, you know, hit them, uh, put the points and then graph them. And remember, you know, your, um, tests and quizzes will be open notes. So we're, we're doing things a little differently this year. All right, let's graph a rose. How do we graph a rose? Well, rose have, roses have the equation a cosine n theta or a sine n theta. So for example, you know, you can have r equals two sine um, three theta and so on and so forth. And that's a rose, okay? All right, now, um, n, so that number, has to be greater than or equal to two. It has to be an integer, and they, you know, and then you get a rose. So every rose has petals, and so do the roses here. The rose has n petals if n is odd. Okay. So for example, if I have r equals two sine three theta, n is odd. This has three petals, and then it has two n petals if n is even. So if I have, for example, r equals two sine, oh, I don't know, four theta, okay, now this is even, this is going to have eight petals, okay? All right, so what we're going to graph here is actually... Um, y equals 4 cosine 2 theta, right? So the fact that this has 2 theta tells us that we're going to have 4 petals. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to graph on the xy axis, and then we're going to graph on the polar axis. Let's just do the points first. Um, so here, when x is 0, when theta is 0, we have 4, then 2, then negative 2, then negative 4, then negative 2 at 5 pi over 6, 2. At pi, 4. 7 pi over 6 back to 2, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, 2, 4. So you see... Um, <clears throat> You know, we have a lot of, you know, teeter-totter, teeter-totter here, okay? All right, um, one thing we don't have in this chart is the pi over fours, and it turns out the pi over fours here, in this case, take on a special significance, all right? Why? Let me show you why. So suppose, you know, you have r equals four cosine two theta, and now suppose we consider theta equals pi over 4, right? So r is going to be 4 cosine 2 times pi over 4, okay? And because of that 2 here, now I have 4 cosine 2 times pi over 4 is what? Pi over 2. You see what happens? Because of the 2, the pi over 4 transforms to pi over 2, and we know that cosine of pi over 2 has a significance, right? Because it's 0 there, right? So it's worth noting here for the roses that, you know, in this case, it's 0. So when theta is pi over 4, it's 0. So where does pi over 4 fall here? Well, it's between the pi over 6 and the pi over 3, right? So here, theta equals pi over 4, r equals 0. Where else do I have a pi over 4? Right here, right? Now here is, you know, 3 pi over 4. Um, and then, you know, 5 pi over 4. And then 7 pi over 4. And you see at each of these, right? Right before the graph is, the r is 2 and then negative 2. So you know that right in between here, you know, right at the midpoint, there is a zero right here. It goes from two to negative two, halfway, it's a zero. Two, negative two, halfway is a zero. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this, okay? So at zero, we have a maximum of 
4. Then at pi over 2, it's negative 4. And then at pi, it's positive 4. You see how it jumps? And then at 3 pi over 2, it's negative 4. And then at 2 pi, it's positive, right? So this is a sine, and this is a sine with an amplitude of 4. Um, I'm sorry, this is a cosine with an amplitude of 4. So where do they, where do they you know, hit 0? Right here at pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. So when I graph this, they're going to look like two periods of the sign. Okay? That's how that's going to look. Oh my goodness. So what is happening here? Remember when we were doing trends before? So we start with a maximum radius. Then at theta equals pi over 4, it's 0. Right? Then we go to a minimum radius, but the same amount. So we go minimum... 4, negative 4, the same as we go maximum positive 4, right? So we're going positive 4, 0, negative 4, 0, positive 4, 0, teeter-totter, teeter-totter, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, <clears throat> let's put this on the polar coordinate and see what we're going to look, what we're going to get, okay? When theta equals 0, we have a 4. And you know what? I'm just going to keep this as 1, 2, 3, 4. So when theta equals 0, we have a 4. And then at pi over 6, how much is it? It's 2. Well, okay, so after that, I have pi over 4, right? At pi over 4, it's 0. You see that? So we have to graph the pi over 4 here. And now what have I traced? I have made this. Okay, now after that, at pi over 3, how much is it? At pi over 3, it's negative 2. Um which is what? At pi over 3, it's negative 2, so that's right there. Okay. And then at pi over 2, how much is it? It's negative 4, so pi over 2, negative 4. Okay. And then how much is it at 2 pi over 3? 2 pi over 3, it's negative 2, right there. And then how much is it at 3 pi over 4? It's 0. So what happened? We had gone from the outer in. Now we went back out, 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 out. In, 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 in. Okay, now at 5 pi over 6, we're at 2. We're going back out, right? At pi, we're at 4. So look, we went back out. And then at 7 pi over 6, we're at 2. Now we're going back in. And then at 5 pi over 4, it's 0. So back in. Hey, look, at, look at what that's looking like. And then at 4 pi over 3, it's negative 2. So 4 pi over 3 is negative 2 on this side. At 3 pi over 2, it's negative 4. So we're on this side, right? We're going back out again. And then at 5 pi over 3, we are at negative 2, so right here. And then at 7 pi over 4, it's 0, right? So from here, we went back out, 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 in, in, in. And then guess where we're going to go? At 11 pi over 6, we're at 2. And at 2 pi, we're at 4. So we go back, out, right? So just like here, we go from out, in, out, in, out, in, and so on and so forth. Okay, all right, so let me show you how that looks here. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that like super pretty? All right, so these are, you know, A equals B cosine and theta. So look at this one, right? Look at this. We're going out, in, then back out, then back in, then back out. So you see how here it's reaching the maximum and it's reaching the maximum. And then go back to the minimum, we're at zero, and maximum and minimum, and finally back to the maximum, okay? Unbelievable. All right, so this is how roses look. And basically what you have to think about is these were the cosines, right? So cosine roses, right, they have their maximum on the um, horizontal axis, 
all right? And now one important thing is, look at this, the radius of this was four, right? Maximum radius is four. Where have we seen this before? Oh my God, right there, that's the radius, okay? So if I give you R equals, I don't know, um, 16 cosine two theta, you know that this has a radius of 16. Now, the sine, the ones with a sine, right? It's just, you know, it's like somebody took the whole thing and just sort of like, you know, rotated it a quarter of a turn, right? And so, you know, whereas the maximum would have been here, now it's just rotated, okay? Whereas the maximum would have been here, now it's just rotated, okay? And when you do the points, those will, those will all come out, okay? All right, the next one, I think it's just fun to say because they're lemniscids. And for this one, I normally go through like the whole thing and then I thought about, you know, do I do this, do I skip it? Since it's here, we're gonna do it, but we're not gonna go through the whole thing. I'm just gonna show you a very, very light version of it. So lemniscids look like this. You have R squared, not R anymore. You have R squared equal to A squared cosine two theta or a squared sine two theta, right? R squared and a squared, okay. Um, <clears throat> all I need you to know for this one, so here I have r squared is equal to 16 sine two theta, okay? Um, so you see how here this is r squared is equal to a squared? Well, this, the square root of a is equal to the radius. Okay, so the radius here is the square root of 16, and that's equal to 4, okay? And the reason why I wanted to do it is because it looks, you know, it, it's just the most beautiful shape ever. So here's what we need to know about these, okay? You need to know that the max radius is equal to absolute value of A. You need to know that when you have a graph in sine of theta, that reaches its maximum at theta equals pi over four. So, hey, this is a sine graph, and the maximum radius is four, and it reaches a maximum at pi over four. Hey, where is pi over four? Right there. Okay, so at pi over four, it's got a maximum radius of four. And then on the opposite side, it's got a maximum radius of negative four. And guess what it looks like? It looks like an infinity curve, okay? And that's all I need you to know about this. That's all I need you to know about this. One other thing you need to know is that if it's a cosine of theta, then the maximum is at theta equals zero. So for that one, it would look, you know, if you've got this, it would look like this. Okay, just horizontal. That's all I need you to know about these. Okay. Okay, then the spirals of Archimedes, and there was actually, oh my gosh, such controversy about these spirals of Archimedes. Um, because there is also a spiral of Galileo and oh I need to get the story right I didn't have time to research it but when one of them died they wanted to oh was it Galileo or Copernicus they wanted to put his spiral on there but they ended up putting in like the Archimedes spiral for the other sign mathematician and it was like a big thing anyways that's just a little you know mathematician physicist whatever soap opera okay Okay, so here, these look, you know, basically A theta plus B. We're going to take the very, you know, basic one. Hey, what does that look like to you? Does it look like Y equals MX plus B? Oh my God, that totally looks like Y equals MX plus B. And what do graphs of Y equals MX plus B look like? It's basically, right? They basically look like lines that go radially outward. Oh, hey, so what's the circular version, the polar version of that look like? I wonder. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's take a look at this equation here, right? We have theta and then r equals 3 theta. We're going to pick points again. So when theta is 0, r is 0, okay? Then it's 3 times pi over 6, which is about 1.6. Then it's 3 times pi over 3, uh, which is about pi, so that's 3.1 and then 4.7, and then 6.3, and 7.4, and 9.4, and so on. Okay, 
So let's see what that looks like. When theta is 0, r is 0. Pi over 6, 1.6. Um, you know what I want to do here? I want to go 2, 4, 6, 8. So 1.6 is right there. Um, pi over 3, 3.1. Pi over 2, 4.7. 2, 4.7. Hey, it looks like we're just like, you know, flying far and far off. The, does Is anybody else getting like a Doctor Who feeling here? At 2 pi over 3, we're at 6.3, 2, 4.6.3. At 5 pi over 6, we're at 7.4. And then we're going to be at 9.4. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? Oh, look, we're getting a spiral. Okay, and that's literally what those look like, is they're just spirals. So isn't that kind of cute? Um, so, you know, as r increases, I'm sorry, as um, theta increases, r increases just like... When you have y equals 2x, as x increases, y increases, okay? A variation of this would be, for example, if you had, you know, r equals theta plus 2. This is like the vertical shift, but it just starts at 2, and then, you know, it radially goes out. All right, that's it for today. We'll stop here, and you can do the homework associated with this.